Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of my Express LRS series. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I installed the receiver into my drone and how I got everything set up and bound so that I can actually go fly with Express LRS. Now, if you don't know what Express LRS is, go back and watch part one of this series. In that video, I went through all of the equipment and I explained some of the advantages of Express LRS. So uh, the link to that will be below and just go check that out if you're not sure what I'm talking about here. With this video, I started out trying to make a how-to guide, and I was going to go step-by-step -step through everything you needed to do to set up Express LRS. But I realized that the video was getting extremely long and extremely boring, and it's actually really hard to have a single how-to guide for this, because every drone is going to be different, and every uh, Express LRS receiver and module is going to have a few different uh, things required to make it work. And so I decided that that was going to be too much to do. And instead, in this video, I'm going to show you, you know, kind of an overview of what I did. And hopefully you'll be able to follow this and see, you know, if this is something that you're willing to take on. It's a pretty intimidating process. It's definitely not plug and play yet. And, you know, you might decide that this isn't for you and that you're not really willing to take on this amount of work. And that's okay, too. It's, uh, you know, this is the very early days of Express LRS, and I think that as time goes on, you know, before too long, we're going to see this built into drones, and you'll just be able to buy a drone off the shelf that has Express LRS in it. So, you know, don't, don't be afraid if, if this seems too complicated. It's not always going to be this way, uh, but the process I'm going to show you in this video is how it is right now. So in this video, I'm going to go through the four steps that I had to take. It's going to be installing the receiver, configuring the transmitter, configuring the binding process and getting binding set up, and finally configuring Betaflight. We'll go through all four of those steps, starting with installing the receiver. If you've ever installed a receiver in a plug and play drone, this process really isn't too different. The first thing I had to do was open up the drone and remove my existing receiver, which in my case was a FR Sky XM Plus. Next, I needed to figure out where to solder the receiver to. Uh, and, you know, it may not be the same as the previous receiver because Express LRS might need a different uh, set of pins than what your previous receiver needed. The easiest way to do this is to find a diagram of your specific flight controller online. And usually at minimum, you'll be able to get the pin out and it'll show you which pin does what. Uh, if you're really lucky, you'll get a connection diagram that shows you exactly which pins to connect to for different types of devices that you might connect to your flight controller. What I'm showing here is the diagram for my flight controller. So I was lucky, I did actually get a connection diagram that has you know, all these various components that you could attach to the flight controller. And so I was able to look at this and figure out what I needed. Express LRS has four pins. So it needs a five volt and a ground for power. And then it needs a TX and an RX for signal. The TX and RX are a UART, which is a serial port on the flight controller, and that's what allows the Express LRS receiver to communicate with the flight controller. The 5 volt and ground pins were pretty obvious, so I found two spots on the flight controller that had that power, and I was able to just solder wires directly to those spots and get the power for my receiver. The RX and TX are a little bit more complicated. You've got to find an open set of pins on the flight controller for that. And I noticed in my connection diagram that there was a example of how to attach a crossfire module. And you can see that that has a TX and RX. And so I knew that that was going to give me the correct set of pins that I needed for my receiver. And so I just followed that diagram and I soldered wires to those specific pins. So I soldered everything together. And then the final step was to mount the receiver inside the drone. And this process was actually a little bit harder than I thought. So uh, remember, I told you that Express LRS is exciting because it's so small, but I will say that that ceramic antenna does stick up quite a bit from the board. And so I actually had to kind of work at it a little bit to find a place to shove that into the drone. But I was eventually able to find a spot for it, and then I was able to close up the drone uh, and move on to the next step in the process. Next, I moved my focus to the transmitter, and the first thing I had to do was build the transmitter module. This was pretty simple, so I just had to screw the circuit board down into the module casing, attach the antenna wire, and finally screw on the cover for that casing. That completed the module, and then I was able to physically install it into the radio, you know, just like any other module. That's very easy to do. On my radio itself, I ended up having to update the version of OpenTX on the radio. ExpressLRS requires some special features that aren't in the main OpenTX yet, 
And so it was necessary to download a special build of OpenTX and flash that firmware to my radio. This was pretty simple to do, and I was able to find the instructions for exactly which firmware I needed on the ExpressLRS GitHub page. So that's going to be linked in the description below if you want to do this yourself. But I updated that firmware, and then I also at the same time needed to get something called the ExpressLRS Lua script. So the Lua script is something that allows your radio to communicate with the module. It's going to give you options for binding and let you configure some settings on that module itself. I got that Lua script and put it on the SD card for my transmitter. And after doing all this, I was able to access that external module and I could see the settings that the Lua script allows. I also had to configure a model in my transmitter and I was able to configure that model to use the external uh, ExpressLRS transmitter module and use the CRSF communication standard to communicate with that module. Once I was done with all this, I actually went ahead and tried binding to the receiver, but it didn't work right, and I discovered that this was because I needed to update the firmware on the transmitter module. This was a little bit of a surprise to me, but Happy Model actually has two different firmwares for the different receivers that they offer. So depending on whether you're using the PPRX or the EPRX uh, ExpressLRS receiver, you need a certain firmware on the transmitter module to go with that. So I went to their website, got that firmware, uh, and then I needed to install the firmware. The process of installing that firmware is pretty cool. So the transmitter module actually has Wi-Fi built into it. And you can use the ExpressLRS script to enable that Wi-Fi. And then you can connect to it from your computer. And finally, that gives you the ability to upload firmware to the transmitter module. It's a really cool process. It was very easy to do. And after doing that, I knew that I had the right firmware on the module to bind to the receiver. That brings us to the binding process, and the binding process was really pretty simple. There's a procedure that you use to power up the Express LRS receiver to put it in binding mode. And basically, there's, there's a little LED on the receiver that you need to be able to see, and you plug in power to the drone, wait for that light to turn off, and then immediately unplug the power. Then you do that same process again, and then the third time when you plug in the power, you'll see the LED come on, and you'll see it blink twice quickly and it'll keep doing that. It'll just blink twice, blink twice, and that shows you that the receiver is in bind mode. So this was really nice. It's much easier than an FR Sky receiver where you're having to try and hold a little button down uh, as you turn on the drone. So uh, that was what I had to do to put it into bind mode. And then at that point, I could use the Express LRS Lua script to tell the transmitter module to bind to that receiver. So I did this and it worked perfectly. And once the LED light on the Express LRS receiver turns solid, you know that it's bound and your transmitter and receiver are communicating properly. So that was pretty easy. The last step to getting this to work properly was to do some configuration in Betaflight. So I went ahead and plugged my drone in and launched Betaflight. And I needed to change a couple of settings here to make the Express LRS receiver work properly. The first settings I had to change were on the port tab. Now I had soldered my Express LRS receiver to UART2 on my flight controller, so I just needed to go in and set the uh, UART2 to be a serial based receiver. Then on the configuration tab in Betaflight, I had to make sure that my receiver was in serial mode and I had to select CRSF as the communication standard for that receiver. So this is what lets the flight controller communicate with the receiver and understand what the receiver is telling it. After that, I was able to go to the receiver tab and confirm that I was seeing the correct input. So as I moved the sticks and, and flipped the switches on my transmitter, I was able to see that I was getting the proper inputs. And that was really how I knew that everything was bound and working properly and that the flight controller was receiving those inputs correctly. I also checked all the modes to make sure that all of my switches were still set up properly. And uh, you know to make sure that whenever I went to fly it, everything worked normally and there weren't any uh, you know, unexpected behaviors from using that new receiver. But that's really all there was to it. Uh, the beta flight configuration really wasn't that bad. And after configuring those settings, the drone was completely set up and ready to fly. So that's the process. And like I said, it definitely can be intimidating. You know, you're going to have to get online and do some research and download some firmware files and so on and so forth. But, you know, it really actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Once I got into the process, it was pretty simple to figure out um, you know, and I was able to get things up and running pretty easily. I think that the Happy Model equipment is a great place to start with this stuff. It's well supported. 
Uh, and Happy Model actually has really good instructions for how to update the firmware and how to do things with their transmitter and receiver. So, you know, it was all a pretty good experience. If you do decide to do this yourself, I'll say that the ExpressLRS community seems to be very active and very helpful. They have a Discord server, which I'm going to link down in the description below. And I've heard that they're extremely helpful there and that if you're trying to get this set up, you can just post in that Discord and somebody will help you get up and running. So, you know, that's all really nice to see. And so now I'm sure you're wondering, what's it like to use ExpressLRS? Was it worth all this trouble? And, you know, I do want to do quite a bit more testing before I give you a final review. So I'm going to be doing that over the next few weeks, maybe flying with this a bunch and testing it in different environments. And I want to put together a full set of test results so you can understand how this compares to existing systems. So if that's something that you're interested in, stay tuned for that. Subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss it when I post it, because uh, that's going to be coming soon. But I will say that I have flown one or two flights with this drone so far, and I'm seeing very encouraging results with what I've done. I'm going to show some flight footage here, and this was a pretty simple test. I'm just in a, in a wide open field, but I got out to about 350 meters, and I didn't have any RSSI issues, no trouble at all. I'm confident I could have gone farther than this. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very encouraging to get that performance out of a receiver this small. I was also on the lowest transmit power on the transmitter module for this test. So, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty encouraged by this and I'm going to need to test it further to see exactly how good it is and, you know, where it might fall short or outshine other systems. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope it was helpful for you guys to see kind of what's involved in this process and decide if this is something that you might want to do in your own drones. Um, but like I said, stay tuned for more information on ExpressLRS in the next few weeks, and I'll see you guys in the next one.